Between truck simulators and pure speed racing games, a unique genre actually exists, a weird amalgamation of sim and slow, and that's where the Mud Runners and Snow Runners games exist. Titles that show you that they're happy with you ripping down the lawns at triple digit speeds, and that can be intoxicating, but so too can sipping in fetid lake water through your truck door seams as you navigate a bog in the middle of nowhere and consistently try to keep your hood above water. Each of these games and DLCs has delivered a massive amount of heavy trucking simulation, and now Expeditions, a Mud Runner game, wants to shoot the same gap between their own titles in the same way that those games did between truck sims and pure racing sims originally. In many ways, Expedition reminds me of a class switch in a role-playing game, from fighter to wizard or fighter to ranger, where the core precepts are the same, but the needs and the abilities are different. And that really is how Expeditions feels. It feels like a game where the experience can feel familiar, and even some of the tools are the same. But the experience is altered, for better or worse, due to the outgoing experience. Mudrunner's Expeditions is a side game in the series and is coming out soon, a title that takes the more freeform Mudrunner's ideas and presentation and wraps it up into a story about exploration and science and gives it a more delineated approach to preparedness and teamwork. Is that a good thing? Let's see. Another good thing is hitting the subscribe and notify all bell. You may hear this all the time, but it actually does help a channel become seen. And if you guys like these kind of things and you haven't seen a video from me for a while, but you're subscribed, check it out. You may have to unsubscribe and resubscribe again to get that turned back on. Where Spin Tires and Mud Runners always felt like a player created side story of the most dangerous roads or ice road truckers, Expedition feels closer to race team documentaries, a closer look at the goals, even up front, and the teams that might go into success with the game's specialist systems and base building elements it adds. The game opens with you directly introduced to the new way of things. Expeditions is just about that, taking vehicles and exploring landscapes to assist various companies, people, and experiments in the wild. And it's true, it does go away from that laid-back but somewhat thematic feeling of rip-storting through four feet of mud in the back 40, finding an old Chrysler to fix up, and then delivering a cord of wood that we saw in Mud Runners or Snow Runners. It's odd, it's different, it's oftentimes more driven and clear, but other times a little bit more gamified than the prior games. So in that way, it's very unique. Where it's not unique is the graphics, because this does look like the other titles. It's very fine lines between snow runners and mud runners, with tons of environmental breadth depending on the locations that you're going to here. Sheer drops in Rocky Mountains or thick forests in the Carpathians with variations in the land and all the terrain that many games only dream of showing. It's a fine looking game, if not a bit bland. Damage is done from driving across the wrong environment with the wrong settings on tires or hitting a rock too quickly or taking a wrong turn and tumbling down a hill. Sadly, this isn't modeled super well, much at least at all. I've tossed the vehicle down a hill and other than flashes of red and an indicator that damage has been done, it's not necessarily hugely modeled. On the other side of this is the deformation on everything in the world, the land. It's a trade-off, I get it, sometimes more noticeable than you would like, but when you take a four-wheeled, barely stapled together rock climber across a ditch and up to its nickeled nuts into a bog, the mud flies everywhere and tries and retries can be seen as physical reminders and deformed attempts on the ground. It's this incredible visual history, a journal in the mud before you, like the tire marks that show racers having a hard time on an S-turn in a track somewhere. Here, deeper, more shallow lines of skidding tires around edges raised up by the deformed territory inform you of places you tried and possibly didn't succeed prior. And, like all of these games, that can help you identify where to go or not go. The three major locations are represented well enough here, though I would have liked probably one more map. Their size can be a bit misrepresented as well, depending on the material that you're going to be driving on, the terrain itself. Because yes, you can put a winch post on the side of a mountain and just lower yourself straight down, and that looks cool as it sounds, with you hanging off the rock like Stallone and Cliffhanger. There are other times, many times, that don't require those tools, and it can actually make some of the locations appear a little bit smaller, depending on the terrain and the vehicle you've chosen. Luckily, each one of the larger areas is broken down into multiple separate maps that are different. I just would have liked one more terrain type, especially if we just want to experiment with this deformation engine that works so well in all of these terrains. It's got a number of settings here for graphics, but it doesn't have DLSS or FSR or XESS, which is a big miss these days. For a game like this, with you pushing out the draw distance to incredible amounts, and with the need to display as many tiny details, minutia and massive as they are, Getting the best performance matters, and while the game's numerous other settings do help, an upscaler, even internally built by them, for rendering resolution would have been nice. 
Nevertheless, sometimes it's the little things like watching your wheels bounce and flatten when you dynamically lower their pressure to get more traction or ripping through a black clay that's built up and caked together on a wall of mountain secretions just to get a bit more purchase on a rock precipice so you don't flip ass over tea kettle into the unknown. It all has this great look and feel just like the original games. In the end, I like the look of SnowRunners a little bit better if I directly compare them, but not by much. When it comes to the sound work here, the sound really gets a bit better when you start throwing larger engines into the cars as they progress through the upgrade paths and every item in the game offers a unique change and the motors at least offer auditory ones. And that's appreciated because despite the changes, going five miles per hour or eight might be the difference between life and death in expeditions. Not always the difference in the engine audio, though. Nevertheless, it can lead to a droning sound like a bunch of dudes are just sitting to your right and left constantly going wah, 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 around you. While tire scraping and crash sounds are important, they still have a muted effect here, which actually is a bit more realistic. But they don't inform as well as I think I would have liked. Probably one of the reasons that this game is just so animate on telling you what got damaged or didn't with large graphical outputs whenever you hit anything and the amount of damage done to them, like an RPG almost. It's good sound, but it's not necessarily varied. And when it comes to the environmentals, not as many as I would have liked to have heard played out. And that's sort of the way I felt with the music. This is mostly in the background and also mostly forgettable. I can see it being turned off a great deal just for someone to listen to the environmentals or a podcast or something on the side. That's no real slight to the creators in any way. It's just the way these games in particular are played and almost require it at times to listen to the environments around you. So I would say the music is just sort of there. Same with the voice or actually not there gameplay. Expedition isn't really special in how it delivers to you that initial information about the game. It breaks out the world into three large areas, with the last two areas both having four separate maps, each with their own missions, for a total of more than 70 jobs around them, as well as the ability to freeform any of those maps when you want to after you get to a certain point. To go into a mission, you may have some restrictions, like a particular specialist or a particular type of vehicle. Finishing those missions always rewards in cash, a new outpost location, or a new part of the map that you can go to easier, or some hidden vehicle, as well as new specialists. When it comes to the vehicles themselves and choosing what you want to do, there's three basic kinds of vehicles in the game. The Scout, which is good for high power to weight needs, but doesn't have much in cargo or fuel and is so weak they really feel like they're made from paper mache and dreams. Offworld, which is a mix of heavy and light vehicles. It can carry a ton of fuel and it's pretty good in that way, but it burns car like a jalopy from Mad Max, so be prepared. And then there's the heavies. These are these monstrous bullies, huge gas tanks, even for small trips, and the ability to throw down entire science labs on their back to do jobs and pretty much drive right over most trees. They're about as dexterous as a water buffalo on a rock cliff, though, which means not at all. But if you really need to power your way to somewhere with something heavy on your back, that's the vehicle for you. Now, cars, both vanilla and customs, are all rated on various aspects. Like I said, power to weight, strength, which really means how many times you can flip the fucking thing down a hill like an episode of Jackass or ratings like inventory, the devices that they can carry, range, fuel tank size, and you buy and can upgrade items that adjust those. And the reason why that is is because diving deeper into this, it means that a car with a great stable base can turn into that last taquito rolling around on the lower roller at a gas station, just alone, burned up, and dangerous, not useful for anything other than a warning about bad choices. It can change depending on the terrains you want to go to and turn a car that's excellent into a terrible idea. Each adjustment and change you do burns more or less gas, differential, gearing, everything really impacts your mileage or helps you save it. Good planning for a long-range multi-step mission is worth planning for, as is knowing when to just idle down a long pass or find a spot where you won't burn 10 gallons of gas trying to mount and goad it up a dangerous washout. With everything rated on three tiers with the ratings and graded scale, it's pretty easy to see what setup you may want for mud, rocks, washed out areas, or deep creek fording. But every vehicle can also have some of its own get out of jail free cards. And that's where tools and items come in. The winch is, of course, your multi tool of expeditions, absolutely ingrained in the experience. And without it, there are flat out a huge number of situations you're going to find yourself in where you'll be effectively stopped until you can get an item, which means being sometimes forced to go to the other side of the map or far away to work your way around to get to a particular spot. And a lot of times, if you don't have the winch set up right, 
or have bought posts to use for that winch, it's going to be very difficult to get it to them at all. Now, depending on the mission you choose, or if you go to the location's free form, it'll probably also dictate if you go into the level with some of those items and not others, because they all cost money from your bank. For example, there might be a number of locations in a map where the metal detector would come in handy, or you could get a mission to install wildlife trail cameras in impassable spots, and you need to load that up, deciding which vehicle to take, as well as how many of those items to take with you. These decisions, and combined with the unlocks and how they work, makes Expeditions feel like, surprisingly, a slightly slower game at times, at least in comparison to the other titles. Even with the gamified elements in other places, it's probably because the exacting nature of the locations you go to and what you need to do for these missions might require more thought up front, like specialists and items. Speaking particularly about the specialist, the specialist might make it so that your drone can travel farther away from the vehicle without losing signal, or that repairs on the vehicle are much easier to do, or efficiencies in navigating burns a bit less gas. Once you get into the field, games like this have always reveled in making the tense moment between going 4 miles an hour and 40 somehow comparable. The feeling of risk here is slowed down, not that it doesn't have immediate results, but these games are so precise and delivered in specific moments. Otherwise, the car is going to cannonball down the side and into a lake and look like a plastic model car sprue when it's done. Rocking the gas and brake back and forth and trying to just slightly inch your way up a mountain is one of the best and most rewarding parts of these titles. And like its predecessors, Expedition is a game of practiced expertise shown by placement of wheels and perfect gaps. When the words, no way, turns into you just fist pump in a silent room at 3 a.m. when you did a simple and not so long run perfectly. In Expeditions, the rush you get, that so precise and so detailed feeling, is many times almost a reflection of reality, which is why it's so goddamned confounding when the game tries other things that aren't. For example, it has airdrops around a lot of locations with parts for cars, special items, and more that you can go and find. But yes, it sounds about as exciting as it is. It's like a surgeon getting a Jolly Rancher if he misses the recurrent laryngeal nerve in a lung surgery. And this means sometimes missions feel great and other times they feel like a little bit of busy work, like a series of odd jobs someone at a science lab's thinking up for you versus the feeling of teamwork that we've actually got in the other games, even though they were solitary. Also for newcomers, the map and tracking of situations can be confusing. So if you're new to this, watch out. Thinking you're tracking one mission and then realizing you aren't tracking that one isn't really that hard to do. Due diligence will pay off there. Also, the game's waypoint system is absolutely a godsend, and using it with the drone to scout out safe ways for one vehicle that might be dangerous for another is paramount to making it and making the most money on the job. Once you settle down into that kind of thing, it really is almost like a very slow board game based on strategy and warfare, with the enemy being the terrain, your resources being the gas, and the health of your vehicle being the health of your character. And in many ways, the missions are like that. The time spent in this game changes dramatically on what you decide to do. A couple minutes, or it can be a long-term campaign of working across the world, taking small moments of victory and merging them with quest steps, like finding an airdrop with an item you need, or building surplus storage at your home base. Luckily, control and wheel options for driving is pretty much exactly what you would expect. You can do wheel, gamepad, mouse, and keyboard with any of them, and the discrete handling really is the same somewhat. It's a different feeling, obviously, but I didn't really have an issue with any of them. I've rappelled straight down a mountain with a winch and spent 15 minutes going up 100 feet of rock at two miles an hour. They all feel good regardless. I think a lot of people are going to want to go the steering wheel route for a title like this. A game where inches can feel like feet and where slightly misreading a bump can turn into a huge bill at the end of your trip may call for a wheel for some gamers. With the gamepad, it actually worked fine in that way. There are people who want even more sim elements in this game, especially as it is coming after Snow Runners and Mud Runners. So far from what I can tell, it's pretty much identical to those games versus a great deal more sim. The game also has a mod manager and account hookup to itch.io for mods. There's already a couple on there, probably from testers or QA but you'll be able to go in. You can also test your mods in the actual game itself by just going into that option. Here's the big problem though for me. The lack of co-op being available day one comes later in a patch, which bothers me at a very fundamental level because it does feel like a massive missed opportunity for a launch feature. And let me explain exactly why. Well, the game does focus on exploration and jobs and discovery and ideas, Thought of two drivers, one pulling the other up a sheer mountain, of, or hell, one momentarily lowering the smaller vehicle off a cliff to find a better purchase for a winch point and get to places the other driver can't, is exciting as hell to me. Less exciting because I can't do that right now. It's just not here. And they say it'll come in a month or two months or three months, 
But that is, to me at least, sort of a big miss. Does that impact the fun factor? Yeah, in some ways it does. I think the game is cool. I think that rating it a buy right now for a very specific kind of fan would be possible if these new changes to Mud Runner and Snow Runner were something that you were looking forward to when it comes to heavy sim elements. They're not really there. This is still basically a review in progress, though, and that's for two reasons. It's a really large-ass game, and I haven't finished up with the last couple missions because a couple times I've ended up throwing my vehicle right down a valley. The other is just that lack of co-op. It's going to change a huge amount of feel for the game. And right now, I really do like the game, but there are enough changes in the way it's delivered and it's just theme. Lacking that co-op is something that sort of bothers me. I really want to see it with that. Unless you were just up at night chomping at the bit for a story idea and this manufactured elements, I don't know if you're going to find that very much fun either. I don't care that a random drone crashed in the woods and I need to use my drone to scan for it. It's fun, but it feels like there's a hundred things that could have been added to those activities that aren't related to the overall story and would have still made it feel more freeform. Again, this is a side game. It is a different style. I'm just giving you my honest opinion of it. Does it hurt it? Not necessarily. It just feels different. I will say that I grew tired of parts of it, but upgrading the base and hiring specialists who help with facets of travel was actually cool. But at times they can feel a little bit like a money sink because you may not even need them at all. And it's a little like hiring a rally co-driver so he can sit in the passenger seat to tell you that, yeah, the water's deep. And somehow that makes you a bit better at traversing it, even if you already have the depth data from the water gauge tool on the truck. Just a little bit of oddity there. Towing other trucks around the game world is an excellent part of this title, though. And there's a couple missions in here where you have to help people who are stuck. Those are still one of my favorite missions in the game. They're here. I love doing these. So as a total, I would say if you were chomping at the bit for a title like this, I could say preemptively, yeah, it's probably something you're going to want to get. If you're expecting a huge change in the sim elements or a ton of improvements, not 100% sure this game is for you yet. I certainly in no way blame them for wanting to change it up and maybe make it a little bit easier for some people to get into these type of titles with an idea that circulates a little bit better in their brain pan for why am I doing this? And they have actually added that. It's just not 100% sure how that's going to resonate with people who have played before. So for newcomers, this is probably the best of these to jump into. It's delineated in a way where you can see exactly what you need to do pretty easy or what you need to do. And then for the people who've been playing these a long time, you just need to decide what kind of fan you are. The one who plays them and enjoys them and doesn't really worry too much about the things they haven't added. Or if you look at these games and consistently want this and that changed and this kind of gearing and all that kind of stuff, well... Eh, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll end up changing the title of this video once I get it completed. Subscribe, check out the podcast. Peace out, and game gang.